10 things you have to know about CWM. In this short presentation, I'll show you 10 must-knowns about CWM. We'll talk about the CWM technique, passive muxes, mux versions, compatible optics, optic types, power budget, receiver overload, calculate the attenuation of the project, CWM or DWM, and general tips. The CWM technique is a technique where you combine different light sources or different colors of light over a passive mux over dark fiber to another data center, for example, where that is multiplexed. The advantage is that you can put multiple data streams over one dark fiber, so increasing your bandwidth. This is done by a passive MUX and CWM optics. The passive MUX doesn't contain any or doesn't use any um, electricity at all. The specific light is coming from the CWM optic. The CWM optic uh, has different light colors which is plugged into the passive MUX. There are different MUX types. There's an ITU standard which is from 1270 to 1610 with 20 nanometer steps. So the biggest CWM MUX is 18 channels. A popular version is also the 8 channel which is from 1470 to 1610. Furthermore, we got modular muxes and ultra low loss um, muxes, which are uh, perfect if you got a uh, dark fiber which is around 70 kilometers and you need an ultra low loss. It's important to have the compatible optic work on your router or switch. This is the compatibility. Every optic uh, needs a specific coding to work on, for example, a Juniper, HP, Cisco or Brocade. We from Solid Optics are specialized in this and we are testing this in our test lab if that coding is working on the specific device. So we can guarantee 100% that it will work for you. You got different CWM optics available. The 1 gig is uh, starting from 24 dB up to 41 dB, and 41 dB is around 200 kilometers. The 10 gig is, start, is starting from 10 dB, which is around 10 kilometers up to 24 dB, which is 80 kilometers. CWM optics can also be made for fiber channel, 2 times, 4 times, or 8 times fiber channel, or an OC3, OC12, OC48, or OC192, and also for 40 gig or 100 gig, 100 gig, which is working in the 1310 range. If you want to calculate what your loss of the line is, you can use different techniques for that. You can use an OTDR, you can use the DOM feature of your optic or you can just calculate uh, how many kilometers your dark fiber is and multiply that by 0 0.27 just to be on the safe side. It's important to have the right optics and uh, to calculate what your power budget is. For example, an uh, SAP Plus ER has a power budget of 15 dB and ZR has a minimum power budget of 24 dB. If you want to have this dark fiber, for example, an ER won't work. That's because the MUX is always blocking the light, around uh, 2.5 dB. Your loss of light, uh, the line is 12 dB, and you got another MUX on this side. So you're losing in total 18 dB, and then the optic won't come up. You need ZR in this case. We can help you calculate the power budget in your projects. Another important thing is the receiver overload. For example, the SAP Plus ZR has to receive the light between minus 9 and minus 24. If it receives more than minus 9, let's say minus 8, you can receive uh, damage the receiver, which uh, will mean that uh, the lifetime of your uh, SAP 10 gig ZR is going down. So you cannot have that uh, for years and years. It will just damage it. That's also for other optics. We can help you um, to calculate that as well. This is always a big question, CWM or DWM. Well, in short, uh, CWM, the advantages are uh, the 1 gig and 10 gigs are cheaper. And you got uh, cheaper LRs. Uh, 1 gig optics can go up to 41 dB. Ultra muxes are possible. The disadvantage is you have max of 18 channels and uh, only the 1470 to 1610 are available as 80 kilometer 10 gig. The advantage of DWM is you can amplify it. You can use 
40 up to 80 channels. Uh, XFP tunable DWM is possible. Uh, the disadvantage, the muxers are a bit more expensive. The one kick optics are more expensive and the muxers have a bit more attenuation. Here, the last slides are some general tips. First of all, work clean. Um, we can provide you cleaning sticks and a cleaning pads. Uh, this is a picture of a surface of a lens. If there's dust on it, you won't reach the 80 kilometers. Uh, another one is measure. Please make sure you have the appropriate tools for this uh, to measure the CWM wavelength. Third one is to monitor uh, all our Muxus, CWM Muxus comes standard with a 1% tap or a monitor port, which in a live environment you can measure your lights. And a fourth one is don't use regular ER or ZR in a CWM project. The SFP 10 gig ER or ZR have light between 1530 and 1570, but the CWM window is only 1544 to 1556 wide. Thank you very much.